Who is the new Raw General Manager? Jesus fucking Christ, he's huge. His name is Dredge. There's some big news for you right from the get-go. Lars Sullivan just got fired. What better way to crown a new champion than to have a four-man tournament? Culminating at the next Raw pay-per-view. Tonight, it's Goto against Kingston. GTR! And he finds himself just under three weeks from now on his way to a chance to being US champion. Oh, what do you want now? Marty Skill wants to show up the Raw General Manager. Marty Skill wants to face whoever comes through that curtain for the world title. He opened his mouth again and it got him in more trouble. Marty Skill, Daniel Bryan for the World Heavyweight Championship. The main event of the evening. Bobby Roode versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. High fly flow. No, Triple H. The game and the ace is how we close this evening. Hello and welcome Universe Mode. This is Day Night Raw. We are on our way towards the next match, uh, the next, definitely not that one, the next Raw exclusive pay-per-view, which will be Payback. Coming to you in just over a week from now, but there certainly is some payback in the mix in terms of what we saw last week on Monday Night Raw, especially between Triple H and Hiroshi Tanahashi. As we saw to close out the last, uh, last week's episode of Monday Night Raw, Tanahashi pedigreed into the mat by the game, and now is not here tonight. Triple H is, and he has a few things that he wants to say. He has a bit of bragging that he wants to do about that whole Triple H ordeal, and you know we're going to be hearing that later on tonight, no doubt about it. Triple H feeling pretty confident about himself, feeling pretty confident about what he did. And we'll see what will happen here tonight regarding what Triple H has to say and where his ego leads him, heading into what I can only assume is a eventual match between the two men at Payback. That may very well be the case, but regardless, Triple H will have words to say here tonight. And of course, we've also got wrestling here tonight and a very entertaining main event match on its way here tonight to go with it. As you can see right there, Kofi Kingston being granted one hell of an opportunity in the main event of the evening. He gets to go one-on-one -on -one against the number one contender to the World Heavyweight Championship, the man who will face Marty Skrull for the world title of payback in Daniel Bryan. Bryan became the number one contender last week when... Marty Skrull accepted the challenge put forward. And, uh, well, no, Marty Skrull, sorry, said he'd uh, fight anyone again. Who came out from the curtain. Daniel Bryan showed up, and here we are. One-on-one -on -one between these two men. At payback, but for tonight, it is Kofi Kingston versus Daniel Bryan. Great action to get into, so without further ado, let's start off with the women's division. Alexa Bliss is going to go one-on-one -on -one against the number one contender to the Raw Women's Championship, AJ Lee. And let the action tonight begin. And what a night of action we have got on its way for you, to be fair. We've got the second match in the little US title tournament going on. We've got a number one contenders match for the World Tag Team titles. All making moves heading into uh, the event, of course, that is Payback. Just over a week from now, we'll see where, uh, where things will lead as we head forward towards it. And now... We see right here it is uh, Alexa Bliss getting ready for this match against AJ Lee. You know, Bliss has uh, been involved a lot more in the um, scene of the Raw Women's Division since the tournament came to an end. And I think that's where the tournament has its advantage. And I think that's also where the new Raw General Manager, Constable Dredge, comes in to give his advantages. You know, I mean, the way he, um, the way he acted, the way in which he... Um, decided, you know, to, to take this brand and shape it in his own way to continue on the legacy of the deceased Dara Ranallo. You know, there are certainly um, ways in which he is doing that, and I think continuing the transformation of the women's division the way that uh, Dara wanted it to go with that tournament is a surefire way to get things going, and of course I think the uh, most impactful thing he's done to continue on any kind of legacy for Dara was the firing last week of Lars Sullivan, as you saw at the start of the show. Plenty happened last week on Raw. Let's hope that the same amount happens here tonight. Certainly gonna be a very interesting night of action if that is the case. Nevertheless, here is AJ Lee getting ready for a matchup against Alexa Bliss as she prepares for a matchup against Rosemary in um, just over uh, a week from now, about a week and a half from now at Payback. You know, AJ Lee, of course, won the tournament at SummerSlam, defeated Oscar in the finals. 
And now she has a great chance in front of her to stop the uh, Raw Women's Champion, who is uh, over eight months now as champion. I think it is the longest women's reign in the history of this universe now going to Rosemary. And, uh, you know, she defends the title when she wants, certainly. She's had uh, some easier paths. She hasn't defended the title since July, I think. I think it was about June, June, maybe early June, July. Late June, sorry, early July. Might have been the last time she defended that title because of the tournament. But she will be defending it next Sunday against AJ Lee. There is no doubt about that. As for also no doubt, there is no doubt that uh, Alexa Bliss and AJ Lee are squaring off right now to kick things off on Monday Night Raw. AJ Lee going to be looking for a better outcome than the one that she got last week in the women's tag team match where Alexa Bliss was on the side of Rosemary. AJ Lee had Emma at her side and she got clattered in the back of the head with, by a baseball bat from Rosemary. AJ Lee said she was okay. There was a little bit of uh, there was a little bit of stitch work to do in her head, but outside of that, she was okay. And she said she wanted to compete here tonight and she wanted to take on Alexa Bliss to prove a point to Rosemary. I don't think there's any kind of alliance going on between Alexa Bliss and uh, Rosemary. I think that was just a one-night thing. Nice face buster there from AJ Lee. Now starting to get a little bit fired up here. Went for the strike there, but gets countered. Alexa Bliss now looking for a choke slam. Yes, she is. Counter there from AJ. In with a DDT. AJ Lee is going to return the favor with the same move that Alexa Bliss was seeking. Oh, here we go. Here we go. The Raw Women's Champion standing right there at the top of the stage. Rosemary standing there. Awaiting, trying to get the attention of the, the fullest attention of AJ Lee, and Bliss will capitalize, rolling up AJ Lee. There's two, and there's three. Oh, and she helps out here again. Rosemary wins on uh, Alexa Bliss. Sorry, wins on behalf of Rosemary. AJ Lee rolled up, distracted by the Raw Women's Champion. Rosemary gonna be frustrated at that. that didn't pan out the way she wanted it to. AJ Lee is going to be uh, furious now with Rosemary. No doubt about it. And that may add to their matchup next Sunday. You know, you know that uh, AJ Lee wanted that win badly. But no, Rosemary comes in a spoiler and it's Alexa Bliss's music we hear at the end of the match. Well, I wonder what the Raw General Manager will make of this. We'll see, I guess. Maybe heading into payback. Maybe even as soon as next week on Raw. Time can only tell on that one. Now, we are due. Uh, we were due the next contest in the um, Raw United States Championship Tournament, but I've just received word here from the Raw General Manager to confirm that uh, instead of that, uh, we will be impromptu impromptly hearing from uh, Roman Reigns. Up next, I wonder what Mr. Money in the Bank was. Well, here he is, Roman Reigns heading towards the ring. Seeming to be in a pretty um, upbeat mood, shall we say. Weird for Mr. Money in the Bank to be feeling that way. Maybe he's feeling confident about himself. Last week he beat Chad Gable in one-on-one -on -one action, of course, in the uh, Raw General Manager's first show. And now I wonder what is on Roman Reigns' mind as he stands in this ring. Well, Reigns saying that people need to... Shut up, or you'll show uh, this dump of the city what he's all about. In Roman Reigns' eyes, there's been one thing on his mind, apart from being Mr. Money in the Bank, and that is being the best. And he says in order to be the very best, he has got to beat them. In his eyes, that's what he's going to do. And Reigns saying that although he is the best in his eyes, he can't fight himself, so he'll fight the next big thing compared to him. And he believes there is only one man who can do that, and that is the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. Roman Reigns challenging Michaels here, I would argue, to a match at payback. And no surprise there, the heartbreak kid will make his way out in the scene of things. Make a challenge to Michaels, he is going to show up. And here he comes towards the ring. Roman Reigns getting his wish here on Monday Night Raw. But what is the purpose? I mean, Roman Reigns... Trying to solidify something here, I guess it's the idea that 
since Reigns has become Mr. Money in the Bank, he hasn't secured that big win. You know, think about it. He hasn't beat your CM Punk, your Daniel Bryan. He hasn't beat. He hasn't picked up the big wins over those guys. And let's see what, uh, what Shawn Michaels makes it all. I mean, Michaels is going to be respectful about it all, and yeah, I'm right there saying that he. Um, He's uh, honored to be in the ring with him. He He's a fan of Roman Reigns' work. He thinks he deserves the contract. And Michael's saying that if he believes he's one of the greatest, then uh, then yeah, there's no doubt in Shawn Michaels' eyes that he wants to do it. He wants this match to happen. But Roman Reigns already starting to play the disrespectful games towards the heartbreak kid, telling him to calm down. He never called him one of the greatest, just one of the next best things. Doesn't mean he's anywhere near Roman Reigns. Reigns is king of the pack. And, he, and Shawn Michaels should be honored to have an experience like this put upon him. Very uh, egotistical. And Michaels will, met, will remind Roman Reigns of his legacy. He was making millions before Roman Reigns could even walk. He takes back what he says and calls him one of the scummiest and snobbiest superstars out there. And he is showing it off right now. Roman Reigns, in Shawn Michaels' eyes, doesn't even deserve a job on Monday Night Raw. And Roman Reigns telling him to listen up. Do not interrupt Shawn Ma uh, Do not interrupt him when he is speaking. He doesn't have to take his anger out on him just yet. Roman Reigns doesn't care what Shawn Michaels thinks about him at all. He thinks he could pull this off. He's not even vi He's not even viable enough to clean the shoes of the heartbreak of uh, the uh, Mr. Money in the Bank. Shawn Michaels telling him to watch his mouth and he does not want to regret the decision he is going to make. Michaels doesn't know what Reigns is capable of in this ring otherwise he wouldn't have challenged him. Now when it comes down to the match he's going to give him a switch in music right into that hospital bed. And Reigns retorting by saying he's not even scared of Shawn Michaels. Why doesn't he go back to the retirement home he came from? He'll find some real competition there. And Roman Reigns has changed his eyes, his mind on it. He doesn't want the match to happen. He wants him out of the ring. And Michaels telling him it's too late because the match has been made official by the general manager, Constable Dredge. There's no running away at this point. It's happening a payback. Michaels will end him. Michaels will have Reigns cleaning his shoes. Reigns will be the peasant at the bottom. He will be the king. And Roman Reigns is on. Look at that. A stare down between those two men right now. The match confirmed for payback between Roman Reigns and Shawn Michaels. Reigns run his mouth a little bit too far. And that fired up the heartbreak kid. And it fired up the Raw general manager to make a decision as well. Reigns versus Michaels at payback. All right, well, interesting stuff already happening on this episode of Monday Night Raw. Has to be said, Reigns versus Michaels confirmed for payback. <clears throat> and uh, what we saw in the Raw Women's Championship match to go with it as well. Good stuff so far in this episode of Raw. Let's keep the ball rolling for the second match in this uh, four-man tournament to determine the, the uh, next United States champion. Who will face Hiroki Goto for the U.S. title at payback? Will it be Jay Lethal or will it be Cassius Ono? We saw Hiroki Goto picking up a win last week over, over uh, Kofi Kingston in the tournament. Another match between those two guys. Another highly talented match between those two guys as well. That saw uh, once again Goto you know, on the verge of being hit with something big or on the verge of being out of it. Slipping out GTR 1, 2, 3. That shows how dangerous that move can be. And that's got to be something that both Jay Lethal and Cassius Ono are aware of. Heading into this match and uh, heading into, you know, whoever wins, heading into payback to go with it. They both want that shot. They both want to be uh, the United States champion. Lethal for the second time. Ono for the very first time. Can they get their wish, though? We will find out. And there is Cassius Ono. It's become a, uh, a strong facer on the brand of... Uh, Monday Night Raw ever since he made his arrival brought up by uh, the Raw General Manager after a short tenure in NXT now he stands here uh, ready to become the next United States Champion and I mean what I find pretty interesting is outside of Jay Lethal in this tournament out of the four men in it um, none of them have held the uh, United States Championship at all it has been 
no titles for Ono, Kofi, or Goto. I mean, Goto kind of being expected given the fact that he hasn't been around too long. Ono has had quite a, uh, a history with the US title. Kofi, I mean, has only been coming into his own these last few weeks, really. But I find it um, very interesting to think about that. Jay Lethal was champion a long time ago, about four years ago now, and is still the longest reigning US champion, I believe, unless I'm wrong. I'd have to uh, check, the, uh, check the statistics on the wiki for that one, but we'll see if that's the case or not. Nevertheless, Conor about tie between these two respectable wrestlers. They both follow the rules. They both know how to win a match within the rules of the wrestling book. And here we go now. Duck under, leapfrog by Lethal. Went for the shoulder tackle there and just whiffed on it. Went in too early and you could see a little bit frustrated there, pacing himself around the ring. Lethal slipping his way out of it. Nicely done there. Grabbing the arm of Ono now. Trying to pull him down. Not going to happen. Hammerlock applied by Ono. Lethal counters down into a position where you can apply the Fujiwara armbar. He won't though. Transitions to a hammerlock. And a knee there from Lethal in the hammerlock position. Nicely done. Ducks under. Oh! Snap German suplex to go with it. Great stuff from Jay Lethal as he takes an early lead in this matchup now. Off the ropes. Double knees in the gut there. And a Russian leg sweep to follow it up. Counter though, sent it to the turnbuckle. Forearm in the back now by Ono. Two of them in the back. Cash is Ono now, clotheslining him down. And Ono lifting Lethal up here and gonna push him away from the ropes now. Lethal I don't think has met Hiroki Goto in ring yet. Oh no, maybe he has. I think he did just before SummerSlam. I might have been wrong there, but I, uh, if that is the case, then I know that both of these guys have come up on the losing end to Hiroki Goto. I know Ono faced him. And they beat each other up with whatever strikes they could find. Great sweep of the leg there from Jay Lethal. Got to give him credit. He sees a quick chance to work with. He went for it. Backfired. Ono now going to make him pay. Shouldn't have gone to the top rope because it has cost him big time. Oh no, superplex to him and Lethal. And oh no now on the ropes and springboarding in with an elbow drop. Great stuff from Cassius Oh no, into the cover he goes now. Kick out at one though by Jay Lethal. Still signifying there's a ways to go in this one in order to walk out with a victory. On oh, elbow in the uh, on the top of the head there. Shoulder tackle will drive. Cassius Ono down into the mat from behind. Lethal in. Dragon suplex now. Great suplex is being shown in this one from Jay Lethal thus far. Has to be said. Double chop there off the ropes now. He's going to come. Cassius Ono and again lethal too early on his timing and pays for it. Rolling cutter there. From Ono, but again, only a one count on Lethal. He still can't shrug off the pain of that kick. He got punted in the back there, but oh, he comes running in with that huge bicycle kick. Fair play to Lethal there, and he sees a great chance in front of him now. Going up to the top rope, Jay Lethal. Paying homage to the Macho Man with the elbow drop. Lethal out on the apron now. Elbow drop again on Oh No. Two elbow drops for the price of one. Into the cover to advance him to face Goto at payback. And Oh No kicks out at two. You know Lethal is craving that match at payback. You know he wants to have his hands back around. That United States Championship for the first time in a very long time. And he's going to any extent to try and pull that off now. Oh no, up on the top rope. What is he going to do to him? Arm drag from the top. Lethal sends Ono flying. Is this enough to get what he wants? No, it's not even enough for a two count. Chin lock applied now by Lethal. 
Trying to stop any kind of fight back for Ono. Trying to keep him contained. Trying to keep him shut down. It's not looking very helpful right now. It's not looking very strong for Cassius, uh, for, uh, Cassius Ono. Able to get himself out of that one though. Might be on his way with a power bomb here. Indeed he is. Running power bomb to go with it. Cover, but in the ropes. The big question is right now is what can Cassius Ono do in this matchup to try and put away Lethal? Because it has seemed like Lethal had this one ready to close. Great bit of work there by, uh, by Ono now, wrapping the arms around the neck of Lethal, making it tough for him to breathe, and causing pain on the arms as well by forcing him to be in an awkward position. But Lethal forcing himself out of that very move. He sends him into the turnbuckle now, but Ono able to counter him, kick in the gut. This is going to be dangerous for him. Oh, there's a stomp right in the chest for your troubles. What a great contest has it been by both men. Goto's got to be watching this. He's in action up next. You've got to think he has got to be watching this and thinking, how do I prepare for either man? And he will be preparing for Jay Lethal. Lethal injection. And that should end it. Incredible to see how quickly that move can be hit. Lethal injection on Cassius Ono to send him to payback. There's two and a kick out from Cassius Ono at two. That has to frustrate Jay Lethal, who thought he had it, who thought it was sealed. And look at the way now he is just striking away here at Cassius Ono. The frustration starting to shine through in the sense of Jay Lethal. But does he have it in him now? Does he have the composure to end it? He might not. He might have got too fired up, but it's cost him. Oh, no. KO. Death by elbow. Lethal caught the ropes on the way down. Much like Goto. From the clutches of defeat. Oh, no. Finds a way to claw back into it and to get the victory as well. Oh, no. Versus Goto at payback for the United States Championship is on. Cassius Ono beats Jay Lethal here tonight to confirm that. My goodness, what a match we are doing with Payback, but what a match we just had here tonight to determine who will face Hiroki Goto and Lethal. As frustrated as he may have been with defeat, shakes the hand and raises the arm of the winner. Great respect shown from these two men. But now, Ono versus Goto at payback for the US title. Man, that is going to be a great, great thing to witness. No doubt about it in my eyes. I am very much so looking forward to seeing who walks out as the new United States Champion. It could be either of them. You won't get a complaint from me. Well, we just seen Ono qualify for it, but Goto's not going to get a night off either. He's got a match to get himself into as well. He's actually going to... Uh, have a return to his first ever match in this universe as he goes one-on-one -on -one against the glorious Bobby Roode. All right, so here we go then with this matchup. I'm looking forward to seeing how this one goes. Roode had a great showing last week in the main event against Hiroshi Tanahashi of uh, Constable Dredge's first Roger, uh, show as Roger manager. And now, here tonight, we wait to see what... Um, Bobby Roode will do in another competitive matchup, this time against... Um, this time against Hiroki Goto. Roode's certainly been handed some uh, some good opportunities so far under the new general manager, there's no doubt about it, but can he make the most of these opportunities is the key question to ask. And the answer is something that only Bobby Roode can give, and not by his words, but by his in-ring performances. I will say last week against Tanahashi was... Um, you know, he put up a tough performance and he certainly showed his uh, his might and his strength. But at the same time, he didn't exactly look... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? He didn't look the greatest because I don't even think he hit the glorious DDT in the whole match. Uh, no, 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 maybe he did. I think he hit one on Tanahashi. Compared to Tanahashi who hit three high five flows. What, what I can say about that though, well, you could definitely take note of of that. 
is that if it took three high fly flows to finish Bobby Roode, does that show his resiliency in a big match scenario? Does that show what he's capable of in a big match Cesaro, uh, Cesaro? In a big match scenario in terms of taking offense, but maybe not so much in terms of dishing out offense? Because arguably, more than once in that match, Bobby Roode should have lost. But there was never an instance in that match where I felt like Bobby Roode was going to win. Even after the first glorious DDT, I felt like Tanahashi was going to kick out. Because it's Tanahashi. Regardless of that, I mean, Roode is here tonight. Tanahashi isn't um, because of the attack from Triple H following uh, his victory over Roode. Roode's certainly shown two different um, sides to him in the last few weeks. You look back to two weeks ago, he was very respectful against Carl Anderson, shook his hand after the match was done. Then last week against Tanahashi, he was a completely different guy. He interrupted the entries of Tanahashi, attacked him on the ramp, he disrespected him a vast number of times in the match so it certainly seems as if it doesn't matter to Rude which side he is on you know which side he uh, shifts towards whether one moment he's getting cheered or whether one moment he's getting booed it doesn't matter to Rude it seems so long as he's making an impact and so long as he's doing something Rude is fine either way with the outcome which is an interesting way to think about it all shall we say Nevertheless, um, oh, there we go. That's interesting. How about that? Nevertheless, Bobby Roode is uh, standing in the ring, awaiting this match against Goto right now. Goto, of course, is uh, on his way to becoming, potentially, the next United States champion. He has uh, Cassius Ono just over a week from now to worry about. Well, that is then, and this is now, and now he has to focus on the man who he beat in his debut in this universe, in Bobby Roode. Will that play out the way he wants it to? Maybe so, maybe not. Root could be uh, in a mindset right now to try and play spoiler. And maybe if he beats Goto here tonight, maybe getting himself added into that whole thing. Maybe getting himself um, a shot at the US title despite not even being in the tournament. That could very well happen. Although that just might be me uh, speculating about it all. Nevertheless, here comes Hiroki Goto towards the ring. Feels if uh, you know from the day from the very debut of this guy, he has been locked around that United States Championship. First with Lars Sullivan, now with uh, Cassius Ono at payback. But this could very well be Goto's night to become the United States Champion. There is no doubt about it. Will it be though? Will it be for him? I wonder. I wonder if that'll be the case or not. I mean, there is most certainly. My apologies. There is most certainly a part of me that wants Goto to be United States Champion. I think it'd be very entertaining if Goto were United States Champion. However, do I think he is going to be able to pull it off? I don't know. Ono is resilient. Ono is tough. We've seen Ono in big match situations not want to give in. And it could very well be the case that uh, next Sunday at Payback is going to be one of those situations where he doesn't want to give in. We'll see. We'll see. But here we go anyway. Rude versus Goto. Lockup between these two guys has been the uh, staple here tonight. Good, respectable wrestling so far here tonight on Monday Night Raw. Off the ropes, back elbow. And down goes Goto early on. Rude feeling a little bit confident about that. How can he capitalize on it though? Lifts him up here, chops in the chest, strikes whatever Rude can think up early on here to try and get the early advantage of a Goto. Sending him into the ropes at first. Stun gun there onto... Uh, Hiroki Goto, Rude realizing that a victory here would be huge for him moving forward. But Goto, not going to let that happen. Goto has him up. Is he looking? Yes, shouting Kai early on from Hiroki Goto. Off the ropes now. Comes Rude after it, but still up on his feet for a moment. Staggering about a little bit. Oh, Canada from Bobby Rude. Short arm lariat and down goes Hiroki Goto once more. No doubt about it, you know, talked about how Rude uh, struggled in the main event, but that was in the main event. He may very well in this kind of matchup be able to put on a really tough performance for Hiroki Goto. He may be able to really give Goto a tough time here. This might be where Rude will excel. Misses with the knee drop, though. And Goto will slip, uh, will, uh, slip in an early uh, cover attempt here. Only a one count, though, on the glorious one. 
Lifting him up now. Is he going to look for a suplex here? Indeed he is. Rude though. Able to counter his way out of it. Nicely done from Bobby Rude. And he will fully capitalize. With a glorious neck breaker. Pun intended right there. Goto though still able to fight back right away. Hard for him in the face. And now back breaker to Bobby Rude to go along with it. Well hit. But no advantage to capitalize on there for Goto. Rude in with a counter backstabber as well to Goto. Into the cover he goes now. Will this have him beat Goto? I couldn't even finish my sentence before Goto kicked out. And again Bobby Rude. Bringing down Goto there with that short arm lariat. Smacking him into the mat. And now a chin lock being applied here. Not the first time we've seen this year tonight. But uh, Bobby Roode certainly couldn't get a compelling lock on it on Hiroki Goto. Who was able to power his way out of it relatively early enough. Roode though. Oh, put up on the shoulders. Ushi Garoshi from Goto. Kicking the back to go along with it. And Hiroki Goto will look to end things. If he hits this, it could very well all be over. Counter from Bobby Roode though. And Roode. Roode in now. To try and end this one. Bobby Roode. The glorious DDT. To beat Goto. Cover on him. There's two and a kick out from Goto at two. And Roode. Can't believe it. The glorious one was certainly had that one. But look at the fight back right away from Goto. Up on the shoulders. And followed through there. Splashing him down into the mat. Is this where Goto does another one of his comebacks from behind? Is this another one where Goto on the, the clutches of defeat. Fires back and ends up winning. Is it going to be one of those cases? No, Goto is looking genuinely tired there for a moment. He was slow to react. And now, uh, well, now he's just standing there in all honesty. Not really doing anything. Rude back up to his feet and will take full advantage. Bobby Rude, though, counted again by Hiroki Goto. Goto looking for a power bomb, maybe. Great counter from Rude, who is really making life difficult for Hiroki Goto here. Oh. Full Nelson bomb there by uh, Bobby Roode. I was kind of expecting a different move for a moment. Roode puts him up on his shoulders again here. Roode in. Flapjack with one arm as well. And Hiroki Goto rolls to the outside of the ring. And Bobby Roode will use the moment to get a little bit of a taunt in here over Hiroki Goto. Who comes running right back in the ring. And oh, the referee caught by that clothesline as well. I think that was unintentional from Bobby Roode. But it has happened. And Roode started to retort to some more uh, underhanded offense there. Grating the face of Goto into the, into the ring ropes. But gets caught there with that lariat. Albeit not fully. Referee getting back up to his feet now. Goto calling Roode up to his feet here. This could be big. Goto double axe handle and Roode goes down. Cover on Roode here to try and end it. But only a one count. I give uh, these guys, the athletes, credit. The amount of times we see even later on in the match, a one count being made just goes to show how resilient they truly are. Diving fish drop, though, from, uh, Hiro from Hiroki Goto to Bobby Roode. And Roode staggering a little bit now. Not looking in the greatest... Uh, oh, no, this could be a huge trouble. Look at this from Goto. Just dumping Roode face first into the mat. But does Hiroki Goto go for the one final move? He needs to end this one all. Leg drop there to Bobby Roode. If I was Goto, I'd look to end this right here, right now. You've got the win right in front of you. You're just one move away from it. And here he goes. Kick in the gut. Oh, look at this. Hiroki Goto. Glorious DDT. Will Rude's own move defeat him? There's two, there's three. The glorious DDT has Hiroki Goto beating Bobby Rude. My goodness, you sly dog Goto. Using the move of his opponent to get the win over him. Very, very interesting indeed.
to see that being the case. Hiroki Goto is your winner in this one. Is Cassius Ono prepared for the opponent that is Hiroki Goto and for the potential next United States champion that could be Hiroki Goto? Time will only tell and that time will be payback next Sunday. I think no matter what, we're in for a competitive, respectful and great matchup between Ono and Goto for the US title and I'm looking forward to it. What I'm also looking forward to though is what is coming right up next. We're going to be hearing from Triple H, the man responsible for why Hiroshi Tanahashi isn't here tonight. Why did Triple H attack Tanahashi last week? Why Triple H? Why? That is all that I have to ask and the answer awaits me in just a moment. Triple H up next. Oh, here he is then. Come on, explain yourself. Why'd you do it? Why did you do what you did last week, Triple H? Why did you attack Tanahashi? Why did you leave him laying in the ring at the end of Monday Night Raw? Why would you ever do such a thing? I'm supposed to like you. I want you to be world champion one day, but actions like this are not going to make me respect you that much. And there he is, um, referencing what I said about why Triple H, why. Well, he is going to tell us just why. He's sick of jobbers coming into the ring and trying to steal his spotlight. Hiroshi Tanahashi was the final straw, and this man is going to pay for it. And Triple H says he's going to pay for it because he has spoken to Constable Dredge and he has granted Triple H a rematch against Tanahashi. And there is no better place for it to happen than at Payback. And it is going to happen. Triple H is going to bury Tanahashi. He's going to bury their hero. And there will be no return. And not only is he going to bury him, but he will do it in a street fight of all things. Triple H can't wait to see the faces of everyone when he stands tall over the ace, finally gets his spotlight back and everyone realizes that there is absolutely nothing they can do about it. And so Triple H ends by talking directly to Tanahashi, he tells him he's gotta get training hard at, pay at payback because he'll send him back where he came from. No DQs, no countouts, no rope breaks, nothing to save him. Triple H will leave him lying in a puddle of his own blood. It is time to play the game. Triple H versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. Street fight at payback. It is on between these two guys. It is getting personal between these two guys now. Triple H wanted it to go this far. He's got his wish. What a fight we are in for between those two. The game versus the ace. Man, did Payback just get a big match added to it or what? I mean, what a night this has been for sorting out the, the Payback card. The four title matches will be uh, decided in just a moment after this match is done. We have uh, Roman Reigns against Shawn Michaels added to Payback. And now Triple H versus Tanahashi in a street fight. What a contest that is going to be. That is one that I certainly am absolutely cannot wait for between those two men but coming up next we have a number one contenders match for the world tag team titles a rematch from two weeks ago actually heavy machinery against magnum opus for the right to get the chance against the revival at payback like i said all four title matches will be decided in just one moment and this is that moment that we're waiting for to see uh which of these two men is going to get the opportunity to see which of these two men is going to be, sorry, which of these two teams, rather, is going to be the number one contenders. Magnum Opus are going to be wanting to um, bounce back from their loss last week, uh, sorry, from their loss two weeks ago against Heavy Machinery. And I've got to be um, feeling pretty confident about their victory last week over TM61, which was without a doubt the um, strongest this team has looked since forming just before SummerSlam. Aiden English, Damien Sandow, and of course the stagehands to stand alongside them. We'll see what will happen here as these two men prepare for this matchup. 
The drama king and the intellectual savior of the masses. This masterpiece that Aiden English has assembled as he calls it. Now he hopes that it can lead him towards a tag team title opportunity. And potentially for Aiden English, as weird as this sounds, a second title this year for him. Started the year as United States champion and would like to try and end the year as world tag team champion. Will that happen or not? We can only find out in uh, in due time. Here is uh, Aiden English though getting in the ring, amped up and ready to go for this one. Damian Sandow certainly the more eloquent and the more sophisticated of the two men at this point. But I guess that's maybe how giddy uh, how giddy Aiden English has gotten since since, um, sorry, I blanked it for a second. Since Magnum Opus has become a thing. Could very well be the case, but here we go. This is going to be a very interesting match between these two guys, between these two teams. Has Magnum Opus recovered enough to be able to uh, pick up the victory? Or is there going to be heavy machinery on their way to their first tag team title shot? We will find out. It's going to be Tucker Knight starting things off against Aiden English here. Let's see what happens immediately. Tucker Knight being brought off his feet there by Aiden English. And look at this, trying to completely avoid a match altogether. Aiden English trying to roll up Tucker Knight there, not even able to secure a one count. Well, at least he tried to put to make something happen there. Wasn't gonna work though, let's be real. And here comes the strength. Oh, the easy strength as well of Tucker Knight. Has him way up in the air with no hopes of getting off. Suplex. Delayed vertical suplex there by, uh, by Tucker Knight and his heavy machinery. Certainly, who are having the bigger impact in the early stages of this match. Look at this now. Deadlift, gut wrench, suplex. Got him with it. Right in front of Damian Sandow to go with it. That can't be a, a good feeling at all. Good counter from Aiden English, though. Tucker Knight trying to roll out of the ring here. He is going to roll all the way out of the ring. Interesting to see there. Aiden English you know, frustrated with that and has to throw Tucker Knight back in the ring. I'm not really too sure what the game plan was for that one there, but it hasn't exactly gone the uh, way that Tucker Knight may have wanted it to. Tag made now Damian Sandow in off the tag. Magnum Opus was working well together now. Certainly are uh, sorting out the problems that they once had. Can he stop it? You know he can't. Damian Sandow couldn't stop the tag being made. Otis Dozovic comes running in. Look at that shoulder tackle. Sandow going head over heels. Elbow at the top of the head. And another elbow for good measure. And look at this now. Aiden English holding him back. Holding back Otis Dozovic so he can't get his hands on Damian Sandow. Trying to help his tag team partner to the best of his abilities here. Let's see what happened now. Aiden English and Otis Dozovic getting involved here on the outside. Take down this sweep of the legs by Dozovic. Not looking that good right now, is it, for uh, Heavy Machinery? Oh, well, not looking that good actually for Magnum Opus is what I meant to say, and it definitely didn't when uh, Otis Dozovic ran into A Aiden English, and he fell over. Overhead belly to belly, they connected with it. Big headbutt connected with by Sandow as well to go with it for uh, form in the face. Now Yoko Sandow was certainly the more effective in the match against TM61 last week. He was trying to be effective again in this one, trying to secure their opportunity. Their shot against the revival. Oh! Hangman's face buster there, and Dozovic now going to be the one to roll out of the ring. A lot of rolling out of the ring going on in this one. I'm not really too sure why, but. Uh, Certainly seems to happen a lot more in Magnum Opus matches than it does in any other kind of match. It's like Aiden English is directing what either side should do. Oh my, oh, I thought he was going to just barely to barely him in, but that is still an incredible feat of power to, take, to bear witness to when Sandow again is going to roll out of the ring here. And Aiden English blocking the way now and getting himself involved there. Standing around his tag partner, trying to protect him for the moment. Sandow will launch his way back into the ring here. Dozovic getting back in after him. Sandow cradling him, rolling him up, trying to get the surprise victory to become the number one contenders. Oh, they almost had him. He did almost have him. 
That was a late two count there, no doubt about it. Tag made, now Aiden English legal. Drop toe hold, elbow drop in the small of the back. Tucker Knight wants back in this one. I mean, give credit to Magnum Opus. They have held down heavy machinery here. This is way different compared to two weeks ago. Uh-oh, caught the leg, belly to belly. Simply, simply done there. And Aiden English wants to roll out of the ring now. Gonna stand, gonna lay behind his stage hand and hope that his stage hand can protect him for the moment. Otis Dorsovich getting a bit frustrated with this soldier. It's gonna stand there for the moment. If I was him, I would have made the target to Tucker Knight by now. Probably would have been the smartest idea to go for. Aiden English gonna try and fly off the top rope here. Was Otis Dorsovich just daydreaming for a second there? May very well have been the case. Tucker Knight in off the tag here now. Knight in, runs into a roll up there by English, but Knight is in the ropes. Protected there, no doubt about it, by the ropes. Knight now, big shoulder tackle. Aiden English goes down, big lariat. Aiden English goes down, and another shoulder tackle, and Aiden English will go down again. One of the stage hands there, I think that was sliding in a steel chair into the mix. That is certainly an interesting uh, way to go about things. The stage hands acting a little bit more productive than usual right now. Could we see it happen here? Oh no! If it was, it was prevented by Otis Dorsovich in with that headbutt. But he's trying to make the crawl, and he makes the target of Sandow now. Sandow, the legal man in this all. There's the distraction. Will it pan out how they want it to? Yes, they will! Sandow uses the chair and smacks him in the head, but whoa! Tucker Knight was getting right back up to his feet for a moment there. Sandow stopped it, though. Referee never saw the steel chair shot. That might have been adrenaline taking over Tucker Knight for a moment. He's still trying to force himself up to his feet. Stopped by Sandow, who's going to come in, and oh, look at those! Brutal knees in the gut over and over again. Cover made. Will this make Magnum Opus and Award contenders? No. Sandow win with some brutal moves in this one. And the, oh, the very end of this match could be on its way. Here they go again. The uppercut. The neck breaker. Dozovic in to distract the referee. And that is going to give... Magnum Opus dreaded time that they wish they could have used to pin Tucker Knight. Dozovic goes. Magnum Opus. Magnum Opus are the number one contenders to the tag team titles. What did I just see? You are... If that actually just happened. That did actually just happen. Wow, um, I don't know what to make of that in all honesty. There are your new number one contenders. Magnum Opus versus The Revival. Wow, that's, that's going to happen. Magnum Opus versus The Revival at, um, wow, okay, I need, I need to take a moment to process this. Magnum Opus versus The Revival at Payback for the World Tag Team Titles. Only on a Raw, I guess, will things like this happen. I can't believe this team is the number contenders, but all right. There you go, I guess. Jesus Christ, that'll be interesting to see. Um, let, let's, let's just move on to our main event of the evening. Daniel Bryan versus Kofi Kingston because I don't know what to say about what we just saw right now. All right, well, here we go then. Main event of the evening is underway. Kofi Kingston getting a grand opportunity here tonight against the number one contender to the World Heavyweight Championship in Daniel Bryan. It's a great match for Kofi, no doubt about it. It is a huge chance for him to take the absolute most of, and we'll see if he can do just that here. He may have come up short against Hiroki Goto last week in the... Um, in the United States Championship Tournament, but hey, those things happen, you know, they, um, they, uh, there's not that much you can say really, aside from the fact of sometimes stuff like that happens, you can't really force any anything else to happen, and you've just got to learn to live with it, I guess. Anyway, here is, uh, Kofi Kingston, though, still looking upbeat, still looking in good spirits, still feeling pretty good about himself. 
And he is uh, most certainly prepared, I would imagine, for this matchup against Daniel Bryan. You need to be prepared for a matchup against Daniel Bryan, in all honesty. Otherwise, you are not going to have a very easy night on its way for you. And Marty Skill better be prepared to see if that's the case or not this upcoming, uh, up, uh, next Sunday, sorry, at Payback for the world title. Bryan came out and wanted to stand up for Monday Night Raw. Wanted to stand up for all the... Um, negativity that Marty Skill uh, spew, that Marty Skill spews towards it, the hatred that he has for everyone in it, and the fact that he believes he's better than everyone else simply because he is the World Heavyweight Champion. Daniel Bryan wants to put a stop to that, and Daniel Bryan wants to have the World Heavyweight Championship no longer around the waist of someone like um, like Marty Skill. Should be around someone who deserves it. And to be fair, if Daniel Bryan is going to say that he deserves it, then I agree with him in that aspect. He does deserve it. He has worked for it. And in my eyes, Bryan should do his very best to keep it around his waist as well. However, he's got to win it before any of that can happen. He's got to win that very title next Sunday at Payback. Can he make such a thing happen? I believe Bryan can, but in the same breath, it's not going to be easy. Because there's something about Marty Skill when he gets in this ring. All the... All the, all the words that he spews, all the um, all the hatred that he flies everywhere, all the attacks that he goes for. He gets in the ring and he becomes a completely different animal to try and beat. He becomes this very uh, savvy technical wrestler who, beca who becomes methodical in the sense of how he wants to break you down, of how he wants to put this match away in his, in his mindset. It's weird to see such a thing happening to such a guy like Marty Skill, but... Could very well be the case that uh, Brian could fall susceptible to the same things that Adam Cole, CM Punk, Cassius Ono have since he's been world champion. Great German suplex though for Brian on Kofi. Brian didn't get the best start, maybe the Colin Elbow type. The speed of Kofi, I think, was pivotal. And why that was the case. Suplex attempt, knee in the head. And a Northern Light suplex to go with it. Cover made here, one, and that's going to be all. Kicks, chops, and strikes reigning in. And more kicks on their way by Daniel Bryan in the corner right now. Over and over into the chest of Kofi. Running knee into the face as well. Not a good start for Kofi Kingston as Bryan gets fired up in the early stages of this main event. Kofi Kingston. Oh, good stuff there from Kofi. Countering on the apron there. And he's going to come flying back in with a splashdown. Both men feeling the impact of it, though. Nasty landing for both. Can Kofi take advantage here with the number one contender? This is a great chance, like I said, for Kofi to prove himself. Misses with a double foot stomp. Brian in. Tilt a will neck breaker and down goes Kofi Kingston. Elbow into the chest now. Spinning kick in the gut is countered there. Oh, spinning heel kick isn't, and he blasted him with that one. Elbow into the uh, knee again there, and Kofi will go up top again. Is this going to pay out the way he wants it to? And it does not. Elbow drop does not connect. The speed of Brian is something that Marty Skill needs to keep his eye on because Brian one moment could be on the receiving end of offense and then could be hitting a big move like that dragon suplex. And his ability, his speed, the counter moves as well is something that Marty Skill, if he's not aware of, it's going to cost him. I shouldn't be giving Skill tips and tricks in all honesty with the way in which he's been acting since he's been world champion. Marty Skill is just one week away, however, from breaking the record of the longest reigning world champion in this universe, which is a bit of a weird fact to think about. Can a top of the record currently held by Shinsuke Nakamura? Still a ways to go before he gets the most defenses record. Currently held by uh, Shinsuke Nakamura at six. Skill is on four successful title defenses. Kofi Kingston now starting to get himself fired up a little bit here. Can he get something going here? Suplex neck breaker there. What does Kofi have now? Going to send Daniel Bryan to the corner. He better move quick. Putting Bryan in the corner is something that you need to capitalize on right away. Kofi didn't, and it cost him. 
That could have been Kofi's calling to get right back into this matchup, but it seems as if he's found another way there. Spinning heel kick into the face there. Kofi, though, stuffed with the attempted cutter, maybe. Maybe even a snapmare. I'm not too sure what to make of it. They are just countering one another now. Standing up on their feet and coming up with consistent counters. Brian putting him up on the top rope now. Oh, boy. Brian going to look for something big. Top row, Falcon Arrow from Brian. Down on Kofi. And Brian with a tope back in the ring to go with it. Kofi in big trouble now. Oh, Kofi's in more than big trouble. Kofi's in enough trouble that this matchup could very well be on its way to the end in the next few minutes. Brian kicks in the chest. One across the head. How is Kofi Kingston fighting on in this one still, though? I would love to know. Monkey flip from Kofi now. Take a look at that from the top cross body as well. Where did he come out with that? Incredible from Kofi Kingston. Daniel Bryan would have been hoping that those kicks would have led into the final move of this match. The yes lock or the running knee. Neither of which have enabled the end. Kofi Kingston still hanging on in this one. And a clothesline sends Brian over the top rope. On the outside right now. I'm not too sure which guy benefits the most from this one. Brian rolls out of the way a little bit and sends Kofi into the barricade. Not once, but twice. The impact there enough to bring Kofi down and keep him down as well. Throwing back into the ring now. Brian sees that Kofi's down and sees that he has a chance to end this. Brian in. Running knee to Kofi. Look at the impact of that running knee. From a bit of an angle as well. Blasted him in the face with it. Kofi should be done for. Brian covers him. There's two. There's three. Will that be the move that makes Daniel Bryan the next World Heavyweight Champion? A payback. It could very well be the case that we could be looking at the next World Champion. Great win for Bryan. But oh, no, 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 no. Here comes the villain. Here comes the villain. Here comes the World Champion. Marty Skirlin. Desperate to try and prove a point right now. Desperate to try and get one over his number one contender. But Brian, right back up to his feet. Running elbow for Brian. That's backfired on Skirl. And Skirl is suddenly going to pay for his attack. Brian in. Running knee to Skirl. In the blink of an eye, it backfired. Daniel Bryan with a running knee. There is your number one contender. And there could very well be your next world heavyweight champion Daniel Bryan and the yes movement run into payback but will they be making their way out for the world heavyweight championship we can only hope so the villain and the yes movement colliding at payback for the world title what a match that is going to be